Okay, welcome to another fun episode of Photoshop Party. Today we're going to be talking about the smart filters and smart objects. Um, nothing really major new in it, but we're going to talk about it anyway. But before we do, let me go ahead and talk about what we've been talking about for the last five minutes, and that would be West Coast School. And for those that haven't signed up yet, I still have openings in my class, Photoshop 0 to 60 in a week. So we're going to have a good time, learn about Photoshop, everything but the pen tool. We're actually going to do some shooting as well, so bring cameras and tripods, etc., because we're going to have a good time learning some new techniques doing that as well. So. Cool. Okay, let's go back. Stop share. And... I'm going to do this this way. And you can see me sharing my screen right now. Is yes. It, is that, cool. Yep. No. So we got that. So let's go back to <clears throat> Bridge, February 28th. And if you're not using a lab, here's a good lab to use. Miller's Professional Imaging. I am sponsored by them when I speak. So at West Coast School, you'll be hearing a lot about Millers and how great they are. And I just happen to really like, love, love, love Millers. So enough of that. Moving on. Let's go ahead. You know what? I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to start off with nothing. So we'll get out of that. Command W gets rid of it. I'm going to hit Command or Control N to start a new deal we're going to go eight by ten at 300 with the white background and what color you guys want the background blue black black's too easy let's go blue okay something dark and to fill it i'm going to hit option or alt backspace come on you can do it there we go and let's change that into a layer, make a copy of it. So command or control J so we have a layer on top of it. I'm going to change this back to white. So let's go ahead and do that. Cool. Okay. One of the things about smart objects is the ability to go back and forth, make it smaller, make it bigger and not lose anything on it. So I'm going to make a couple of layers. Command J. So this one's going to be regular. So we'll just call it a regular layer. The next one on top is going to be a smart layer or a smart object. To make it a smart object, all you have to do is right click in the blue area right next to the word smart, convert to smart object. You can also Let's go Command Z, go up to Layer, and somewhere up here is Create a Smart Object, Convert to Smart Object. Either way, you can do that. And you can tell that it's a smart object if you look at the right bottom right corner of the layer right there, you have the Smart Object panel. So I'm going to take both of these. And I'm going to command or control click on the layers, which gets them both selected. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go command T or control T, which is free transform. And then I'm going to drag it all the way down, down to nothing. I hit enter or click on the box up there that. And then Command-T again, or Control-T, drag it all the way back up again. And there's a checkbox up there. You can do that, or you can hit Enter, either one, and it locks it in. Now, realistically, this is not going to hurt anything. So let's go ahead and hide that layer for a second. And I'm going to zoom in on the outside corner. And we're going to kind of move it over just a little bit, hit the move tool, 
And if you look at the corner, it didn't do a whole lot of damage to it. If we do the same thing with the smart object, let's move it down a little bit as well. Back, I'm gonna change the color of the smart object to, I'm gonna change the regular one to red. So let's go ahead and hit cancel and go up to red up here, click okay. I fill it in, boom. So both of them, if you look real close, there's not a whole lot of damage to either one by shrinking it and bringing it back. The reason is the lines are super easy. I mean, straight lines, it can fill in the blanks without a problem. So let's do this. Mike, I'm yes. seeing, I'm seeing, maybe it's just my screen, but go back. Zoomed in. You're seeing a border, right? You're seeing, seeing a border a, on the blue? I'm oh, seeing a border and the red. Blue is more prominent than the red, but I'm seeing it on both. Go close. Yeah, let me get into both. No, where'd it go? Oh, yeah, I see it too. A little, I don't see it on the blue. I see it on the, the right. red just a little bit. But that's okay. We're going to fix that in a second. So let's go Command Zero again. And what I'm going to do is... I thought it was neat. I'm going to put a shape. Let's just go with polygonal shape. And right now, red is selected, so I'm going to put it on the smart layer. That didn't work right. Hang on one second. There we go. Hit return. And then I'm going to command E to bring it down onto the smart layer. So now it's embedded on the smart layer. So if I do the same thing again, command T. Let's do command zero so we can have it and drag it all the way down to the corner, lock it in. Command T and bring it all the way back up again. You're going, uh-oh, that didn't work, did it? But Photoshop is going to say, yes, it did. But it didn't, oh, you know what happened? I undid the smart object when I dropped that in there. So let's do this make it a smart object again. Now we'll do the same thing. Command T, which will make it smaller. Drop it down to the corner and make it teeny tiny. And then Command T again to transform it, bring it back up. And now you can see it's still it does look like it's showing a little bit of a thing around it. And I think what happened was when I did the polygonal tool, polygonal tool, it added a stroke to it. So that's so why Mike, you're what's, saying. What's the purpose of the of the smart objects and smart filters? I'm going to show you that with this one right here. We're going to go to the red. And let's go ahead and make it a blue background. Do the same thing, polygonal. And I'm going to Command-T it again. Whoops. No, I'm not going to Command-T it. I'm going to merge the two together. Now I'll do Free Transform. It's a long-winded way of showing you what smart objects, the purpose of them. And we're going to bring it back up after making it small again. And you can see the edges around the polygonal right there are starting to smudge. So it's it's taking what's there and trying to reform it. So let's go ahead and get rid of that for a second. And I'll show you in real time. So we'll do command, command new, and we'll do eight by 10 again. I'm gonna add a butterfly. 
So I'm just going to hit my move tool, drag them over to the top, and then drag them back, holding the shift key, puts a dead center. So you can see there's a lot of detail in this butterfly. Let's make a copy of it, Command J. We're going to change this one to a smart object, the top one again. And we'll title it Smart. And layer one is going to be changed from regular to dumb. So let's go ahead and take the move tool. I'm going to move the dumb layer, where the, the dumb one to the right. Now let's move them to the left. And we'll take the smart one and move them to the right. So now there, there's two separate layers there. So if I hold the shift key, I have a smart layer on top, the dumb layer on the bottom. Hold Command or Control T. And I'm going to make them both super teeny tiny. And you can see they're both super teeny tiny, right? So let's go ahead and bring them back up to full size again. Command or Control T. Make them big again. Lock it in. The smart layer is the one on the right. You can see that I can make it smaller and bigger, smaller and bigger all day long, and it's going to keep its detail in there. The so it dumb, kind of turns, turns it into a vector file. Just pretty much, yeah. But you can't enlarge. You can enlarge a little bit bigger than the original, but if you start going too big, then it's going to also start to pixelate on you. On the left-hand side, you've got the dumb one. That's just your regular run-of-the-mill rasterized file. And what it does, when you shrink it down, it takes what's left of the image way down with teeny tiny pixels and tries to fill it back in again. So if I did that again with that particular layer, let's do Command-T with just that layer, make it small, then Command T, make it big again. It starts to pixelate a whole lot more. So that's what you're seeing um, when you have that. So if you want to maintain something, if you're planning on making it smaller and bigger, bigger and smaller, then the smart object's the way to go. So let's go ahead and we're going to get rid of that guy for just a second. And I'm going to use the butterfly here, the smart butterfly. We're going to move him over to the center a little bit. And hopefully you can see the lines in my screen right now. What it does is tells me, okay, that's exactly center. It's centered on the horizon line. It's centered on the vertical line. So it is still a smart object. And if I go to filters, and we'll go to the most commonly used one, Gaussian blur. And I'm going to blur it 1,000 pixels, which means it's going to disappear. Well, that didn't work very well. So let's go ahead and fix that. Double click on Gaussian blur. Let's bring it to, say, 30 pixels and make it super soft. Actually, that ended up being almost 10 pixels. And then I want to change the background to blue again. So let's go ahead and fill it in with blue. Now I want to change it to white, make it white. Now let's make it blue. So now you're going back in history. And once you get past your, I've got it set to 20 history states. Once it's past the 20 history states, you're locked out. But I can always go back if it's a smart filter and correct everything. So with smart filters, you can go in and redo the filter over and over, um, no matter how many states you've gone past your thing. If I did this with the dumb guy, well, I don't need to blur him, but let's say, let's try sharpen, unsharp mask on him on the dumb one, see what happens, nothing. 
um, there's nothing I can do to fix them after I've gone back. I've already shrunk the smart filter down, made it bigger, shrunk it, made it bigger. I put a Gaussian blur on it, took the blur off. I can go back and do the blur again. And it's editable the whole time. So that's the benefits of doing a smart filter. Now you don't lose you don't lose the data on that every time you make adjustments, bring it back and forth, or is it steady? You do not. It what happens is it makes your file much, much bigger. So you got to have the the RAM to run it to pull that off. So I can go in and okay. do Gaussian blur again and take it down to zero. Or I can turn the blur on and off. So I can just hit smart filter, click the eyeball off. So let's blur them again. Let's go nine pixels. It's super soft, right? I would say that's soft. So I just go in and turn the smart filter off. Any of these filters can be used in the smart filter. Would I can do the background too. You can change the background to a smart filter if you wanted to, or to a smart object. Is that the question? I just meant, yeah. Would you? Would it be a value to do the background as a smart object as well? Yeah, I'm going to show that in just a second um, by bringing in a file straight out of RAW and open it as a smart object. So any other questions on the butterfly that we got so far? Does it work the same way if you use a third-party plugin like uh, Topaz Gigapixel? You should change it to a smart object and then use the Gigapixel and bring it back in to Photoshop? Yeah, I can do, say, Sharpen AI. Okay. And it's in the smart filter. And if you look at the... Later, well, too late now. We'll get back to it in a second. Hopefully, it won't take too long to run the filter. It'll take about 10 seconds or so. Come on, come on. So if I turn off the Gaussian blur, the Topaz Sharpen is going to say, oh, we need to redo it again. Because <laughs> it's a smart object. And... Preview. Come on, hurry up. Oh, it's just going to reprocess it. It's not going to go through the whole thing. So is there any disadvantage of changing every image that you're going to work on to a smart, smart object? It takes time to run the filters because they're adding in. Um, it takes memory to run it and it takes space. So this file, I'll show you when I open up a smart object out of raw, the difference between the sizes on it. Okay. You see, okay, I did um, sharpen. So it's run sharpen. And every time I turn it on and off, it's going to run through it again. So. I'm going to tell it not to do it this time when it comes up. Cancel processing. Cancel. Goodbye. So it will run most of the third-party software. Um, I know Topaz does run with it. I believe Skydom will work with it as well as Nick. I know those will work as well. So. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Don't save, goodbye, go back to bridge. And I've got a picture of an eagle. And I would open it. If I was going to work with this, I would right click on the image, go down to enhance and do the enhanced version, which gives me a larger file to work with. But it does take a whole lot longer to open up. If I hold the shift key down after I've done my processing on the bottom right, let's go ahead and bring that smaller so you can see it. If I hold the shift key down, it says open object where open is. So it's going to open as an object, a smart object.
which takes a little bit longer. And that is 130 megabytes for that image. So let's go ahead and do double click on them. We're just going to open them regular. And you saw how fast that opened or almost opened. It's spinning on me. There we go. They're both showing 130 megabytes, which is bizarre, but okay. Don't save that one. Let's say I wanted to do some work on it. We'll do um, an extra layer. And I'm going to make a cloud out of a brush. So B for brush. And we'll go to my brushes. See if I can find a cloud up there somewhere. Search brushes for cloud. That's a mixer brush. I don't want that. Here's a cloud brush. I'll select that one. And we'll go to white. Put a couple of clouds in. And let's say I wanted to change the sky to a different color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the picture of the bird in the layers right here in the icon. Double click on it. And what that does, it opens it up in Camera Raw. So we'll go to from basic down to color mixer. And then I'm going to select saturation. And I'm going to click on the bullseye right there, which means I can pick what I want. I'm going to change saturation, hue. There we go. I wanted that red color. So we're taking out the, the blue sky. Click OK. And what that does, it now opens it up back into Photoshop with the sky changed. Hmm. Well, let's do another Command-J on the clouds, and then we'll move them. And the art director, Anthony, says, I don't like that purple. Can you make it more of a yellow or orange? So we'll mm -hmm. double-click on the picture again. Open it up, go to Hue, click, pick my bullseye. Let's see if we can find an orange in there somewhere. That's just picking up on those. Hmm. I can't make an orange for you, Anthony. I'm not good at that. Wow. But you can see you can change the colors anytime you want just on that. Or... If you wanted to change the temperature, change the vibrance, the saturation, oversaturate the heck out of it, um, crank up the texture and the clarity so it's like crispy, crisp, kind of like you see in print competition where people make their images crispy sharp, like over sharp. So that came out, it's like, oh, that's ugly. So let's go ahead and double click on it one more time. <clears throat> and reset the default. There we go. And then we'll go to auto, bring it back up a little bit, a little bit more exposure. And I happen to notice that there might be a a spot or two on there. I'm going to take a couple of them out real quick. What did you click for spots? To show the spots, please? In the upper right-hand corner. Okay, let's go from your basic editor right here, all your basic edits. Uh-huh. You come down to the crop tool, which is next one down. Right. The third one down looks like a Band-Aid. 
Mm. That's the healing brush. And then I clicked on visualize spots. Gotcha. And that shows all the spots that show up. Thanks. Uh-huh. And you can see one right there by his wing. So if I hit the clone stamp tool, you'll see that I cannot open. I can't clone on that layer. I can clone on the upper layer above it, which is select all layers. So I'll just option click and then clone out the one next to his wing and take it out. If I try to clone on this layer, it won't let me because it's a smart object open and raw. So if I wanted to make a copy of this layer, if I hit Command or Control J, what that did, it made a copy. But if I open up, if I open up that camera raw again and change, say, change the exposure, hit OK, it did both the layer and the layer below it because it was all one. However, if I go to layer, there you go, new smart object via copy. New smart object be, be a copy. We'll try that and see what happens. There's a way that you don't get both layers to do that. See, it did it there. So what I'm going to do is Command Z to get rid of that. Go back to here. I'm going to make a copy of the layer using that. Do the same thing. Click OK. Preparing smart object. And it did the same thing again. So we'll drag him to the trash. We'll do down click. There is a way to do this where you only have one showing up. And I can't remember how to do it off the top of my head right now for some reason. And I just went through this with my own brain. Huh. It wouldn't be the edit contents of the copied layer you did, would it? Where you just were? No, it's there's a way to make a separate layer like that and to not new smart object via copy okay. should should do that should but it never works when you're trying to do it okay you can see the bottom layer is still the original the top layer is not. That's because it's making an entirely new smart object. When right. you just copy the layer, you're copying the smart object as well as the layer. That's, so exactly. That's what, I was, that's what I was trying to avoid doing is copying the same thing. And I, I just didn't have my head in the right place. So, okay, I want to go and fix this again. Let's drop the exposure up a whole bunch. And then after that's done, we can change the exposure on the original. Double click on there. And then let's go ahead and drop the shadows down, drop the blacks down, take the highlights way up, and the whites way up. And now you have a very interesting, weird shot. But you still have the original up on top which you can play with. So both of those are available to play with the whole time. 
So that gets it gets confusing when you're going from making a copy of the layer to making a copy of the smart layer. It just it's confusing as heck. But it, it works. And once you've done it a few times and not under pressure, you can do it without a problem. So you know, one, can you bring that back up for a second, Michael? Bring it back up again? Yeah, just for a quick sec. Yeah. One of the things that really screw people up when they first start using smart objects is that a lot of your tools will not work because they are vector graphics rather than raster. So one of the ways you had, you'd mentioned like on your layer one there that you could do, you could use those tools and that they would affect the layer below, but you got to make sure and this is what really kind of tweaked my mind for a long time. If you look up above at the sample and it says current and below, that's why that works. And that's the workaround for using those tools is to put a blank empty layer above your smart object layer, but you got to make sure that it says current and below. So you can, you can use your, you know, any of your, any of your tools um, on that blank layer and it'll go down and affect the smart object layer below it. Once you've done that, then you can, you know, you can bring the layers together or you can just leave them alone or am I making sense? Yes. So yeah. I've got, well, let me it's that current and below up there. That's the tricky thing. You look forward to the right from you. Yeah, right here. There. That's the thing you got to make sure is, is set to current and below if you're going to do that. I had all the zoom tools blocking that, so I couldn't see it. Um, yeah. So if I wanted to go with layer one copy, well, let's go ahead and do this. We're going to make it a smart object. Convert to smart object and go to stamp. And you can see that the stamp tool will not allow me to do it. Oh, don't go away. I didn't ask you. So what I have to do is open up this layer, use the stamp tool, the current below. So I'll hit option right there. Why is that? Well, you, I'm not sure that you are. Oh, show yeah, your my, layers. my brush size is not doing anything right now. There we go. Are you going to black or what? You can see it's starting to take it away a little bit. Not like it should. So let's go ahead and put something underneath it. What I have to do, which is the weird thing now, is I have to save this smart object, con command S, and then close it to go back in. So now, go to layer, now go to layer one. And you can use, there you go. I'll go to layer one and now use your tools. Use your smudge tool or your clone right. tool, or whatever tool you want. And as long as you have current and below, it will make that, there you go. I can take out the cloud. So let's right. say, let's option click on the wing. I'm gonna go up to layer one and I wanna use my brush, but it won't allow me to use the, br the, the clone stamp tool because it's a smart object. So what I have to do, double click on it. And now I can add the bird in that I'm cloning. Cool. And to get back into the rest of it, I have to save it and then I have to close it to put the bird in there. That in the beginning is very, very confusing to a lot of people because you have to save it and then close it. So is everybody thoroughly confused with that one? <laughs> what are you saving? Are you saving the layer or the whole? I'm transition? saving. I'm saving the smart layer, which How do you, it doesn't you save it to anywhere in particular. It just saves it in the file so that is it's it a, there. Is it so a command S? Command S. Okay. Thanks. Or you can. Let's go ahead and we'll do another bird right here. Clone them in. So let's say I wanted to now go out of it. I'm going, what the heck? I'm lost. I can't do anything. So you can go up to file, close, 
and it says, do you want to close the PSB, which, or do you want to save it? Yeah, we have to save it before we can close it. So we hit it, and there it's back again. But it's all in that same layer. But I can also go in and undo what I did. So I could take this guy out, lasso him. That was a good lasso, wasn't it? And then what I want to do is get rid of him. So E for eraser, which I never do. And just erase this guy out of there. Command W to close. Yes, I have to save it. And now he's gone. So are you saying that layer one that's not the smart object is kind of like your working file? The layer one right now, I'm not doing anything with it. I'm working on the smart object layer itself. If oh. I were to go to layer one, I can get my clone stamp. So I hit S for clone stamp. And then option. And then just draw a new bird in. It's not a problem. There, now we have a bird. I don't have to close it. I don't have to save it. Whereas if I want to do it on layer one copy, which is a smart object, you can tell by the little right mm -hmm. bottom right corner, you can see I get the thou shalt not do thing. You have mm -hmm. to double click on it to open it and then clone it back in again. Where are you cloning from though? I'm cloning from the original layer that was below that I sampled earlier. Oh. All right. I'm gonna have to it's confusing as movie. it's confusing as all get out when you do that. But when you're doing say a filter, if I want to do a filter on that layer, <laughs> go up to add noise. So let's go and add a whole bunch of noise. And everything we did for that layer, we added noise to it. And I didn't have to save it, didn't have to close it. I have the smart filter right here, right underneath it. So I can turn it on and off. Or go so back and change the amount of noise. You can. I can go back and change the amount of noise anytime I want to. I can change the density. I can change the, filter, the feather on it. Um, double click on the noise filter. Drop it down. Turn the preview on and off. I can do everything I can with the regular filter, except now I can change it back and forth. And I can add filters on top of it. So let's say I got add noise. Let's do filter. Um, I don't know. Let's do spherize. And we'll do it really minus 100, see what happens. I don't even know what's going to happen. You can see it, it tweaked it a little bit, and brought the bird down and made it, it spherized it, but it made it weird. So you can go in and play with smart object. I don't like spherize, so we'll just take it out. I don't like the add noise, I'll take it out. You can go back and forth with the smart objects and change them all the time that you want to do. And if you get three or four of them on there where you decide you don't want them, you can either turn them off, but even better is you can delete them. You can right click and delete because each one of those is taking up more space in your file. Right. Even though they're turned off. So I can right click. Disable smart filter or delete, delete, smart, delete filter. smart filter. Either one. Remove it from so you're not building up the size. And you got four options here. Edit smart filter blending options. Edit smart filter, disable, or delete. Let's delete that. Boom, gone. There you go. The best way to learn this is start playing with it and see what it does um, over and over and over till you understand, okay, sometimes I have to save, sometimes I don't have to save. Um, with filters, you don't have to save, but when you do edits to this, you have to save it. So if I hit B for brush, I'm in my brush tool right now. 
have a blue brush that says you cannot do it must be rasterized no i don't want to i don't want to rasterize it so I double click to open it add a blue cloud close it save it and now i have a blue cloud everybody's going holy crap this is confusing as hell yes so it is so does it, it is save? it doesn't save anywhere or does it save it in the file it saves it within the file okay So it doesn't save to, like, when you save this image, you pick where you're going to save it to mm -hmm. with the cloud that I just painted in. It doesn't save it to anywhere. It's just within the file. So if you close that file, it stays in the file until you open it up again and delete it if you decide you don't like it. Correct. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions on that? Gary, you look like you're ready to explode. <laughs> so. Yeah, you know, I, I am. I had a tough flight last night. Uh, <laughs> that makes two of us. I have a root canal that acted up and I couldn't sleep at all last night. So. Oh, hate that. Hate that. Hate that. Any other questions on this? Okay, I'm going to turn off the recording so you can ask your questions. So hang on one second. <laughs>